The sports sedan represents a rare category in the automotive kingdom. It's a place where both average drivers and driving enthusiasts can find common ground. And it's a space that BMW has dominated for decades. Say the words 3 Series and you've got a kind of shorthand for this sports sedan dominance. And today's test car, the middle of the range BMW 330i, is a perfect litmus test for where the Bavarian brand ranks in this always hotly contested segment. How does it look? BMW always seems to favor sharp but conservative styling for its breadwinning 3 Series. To my way of thinking, it's one of the reasons that the model seems to stay attractive in the used market. But it's fair to point out that this Generation 3, designated by the code F30, has been around for five years already. It's such a common sight on the road that it's hardly fresh. Suffice it to say that big competitors like the Audi A4 and Mercedes-Benz C-Class are far newer and more fashionable. How's the storage? So the roughly 13 cubic feet offered by this trunk is just bang on average for the class, which means that you're not gonna have any problem with groceries, luggage, or a few golf bags. Overall capacity for storage in the cabin is quite standard too. BMW provides a nice solution for your phone in the center console, and door pockets seem to be more capacious than average. On the downside, bigger bottles or go cups get in the way of the climate controls with this forward cup holder placement. Is it roomy? Both driver and passenger get a wide selection of seating positions. I especially like that these chairs can be positioned quite low to accommodate tall drivers like me. I never worried about legroom, to be sure. The back seats, however, will remind you that this is a compact luxury car. Don't expect a six-footer to sit behind me and be happy about it. How does the interior feel? Now, something I definitely enjoy about this interior are the BMW Sport seats. They've got enough bolstering to really hold me in position if I'm driving aggressively, but they never feel overly tight or pinched when I'm driving normally. And, and this is cool for you tall folks out there, they have adjustable thigh bolsters too, which make your legs feel a lot more supported. On the design front though, things are definitely feeling a little bit more dated, and that's especially true if you've sat in a recent Mercedes or Audi product. Is it well equipped? Our middle child 330i has about $8,000 worth of options added to it. It's $950 for the rear view camera and park distance control, $500 for heated seats, $1450 to trim those seats in Dakota leather, and $2450 for the premium package to add bits like the powered moonroof, keyless entry, lumbar support, and XM radio. Oh, and don't forget a huge $1950 for the upgraded navigation system. How's the infotainment system? BMW's iDrive feels like an old friend at this point. We get along well enough because I know what it's good at and accept its faults. The screen is big and easy to read, and the menu navigation fairly logical. Still, it's weird not to have a touchscreen in this day and age, to say nothing of the lack of Android Auto or Apple CarPlay. Is it a good daily driver? So one of the things that BMW has always been sort of magically adept at is creating really, really good ride quality with good handling. And I say that because it's something that's really pertinent when you're talking about daily driving. So especially around Detroit and in other places uh, where there's a lot of cold weather, people will appreciate the fact that really bad roads are soaked up pretty well by the BMW suspension. Now I've already talked about the seats, but just to hammer home the point too, one thing that I 
really dig about this car and the fact that it would be easy for me to daily drive is that the seats are just very comfortable. That doesn't just mean when I'm throwing it into a corner, but they're soft enough while still supporting me. Um, they are absolutely uh, good for the posture and put me in the right seating position. And they're combined with the fact that I just have really great visibility all the way around. Even somebody of my height can get pretty low in the car and feel really comfortable, uh, or somebody who's a lot shorter than me would be able to raise the seat up a good amount. On the downside, and I've done a lot of highway driving in this car, is it's just not as quiet as I would expect a luxury car, even in this segment, to be. Is it fun to drive? So this engine makes 248 horsepower and 258 pound-feet of torque, which isn't a ton in a car this size, but it's certainly more than enough to make it feel sprightly when you get aggressive with the accelerator. And now when we're in Sport Plus, we get a little bit more exhaust, though as has been pointed out to me, the exhaust still doesn't sound great. But more importantly, we get a suspension that's a lot stiffer. So if I corner really hard, uh, I just don't feel the body rolling very much. Of course, there's one thing that especially driving enthusiasts always talk about when it comes to new BMWs, and that's the steering, right? I've got to say, I have that same memory of, of uh, driving you know, a Buddy's E30 and having it feel really plugged in and super connected, some of the best steering that I've, I had ever felt to that point. And this is not that anymore. But the fact of the matter is there are few cars that have that kind of experience, especially not those in the luxury sports sedan class right now. So the good news about the BMW rack is that it still feels really precise. It's quick to turn. The car is really great at sort of taking a set and then going when you want it to. And you feel very much in control of the vehicle. The downside, of course, is that you don't feel much information about the road from the tires. That's just something that a lot of electric steering systems have taken away from us. How's the fuel economy? All of the luxury brands have a 2.0T in their compact sedan offering today, and the 330i still ranks among the leaders in EPA fuel economy. Ratings of 23 city, 34 highway, and 27 combined beat numbers put up by just about everyone except for the C-Class. How much is it? The 330i in rear drive form starts at $38,450, while our test car has a sticker of $47,345. Both of those numbers are pretty reasonable in terms of what you get, though I think you could build a very fun and comfortable version of this BMW in the low 40s. What are the negatives? The age of the F30 platform is the biggest detractor here, and it's fair to remind you that this 3 Series is scheduled to be replaced in 2018. If you're buying today, most newer competitors will bring to the table some combination of more power, better interior tech, and sleeker styling. Who should buy it? It may not be the kind of enthusiast sedan that helped build the 3 Series reputation, but this generation of BMW does mix excellent handling with ride refinement and quality that make it equally good on weekend blasts or as a day-to-day -day driver. If you guys like this Why Buy video on the BMW 330i, you should really consider subscribing to our channel. We've got a new Why Buy for you every Thursday, lots of other original video, and all kinds of good stuff on the YouTube channel. Also, you should look for us on Facebook and on Twitter and at MotorOne.com.